please feel free to post your questions at any time into the GoToMeeting box on the right side of your screen, and we'll answer them all at the end of this presentation. Brian, let's start with you as an expert in the wealth management practice area and uh, ask you what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate being here today and for everybody joining us. Well, as somebody who has spent a, a better part of the last two decades working desk side with hundreds of advisors helping them utilize their technology better, what we typically find is when we start to talk about in what ways or in what activities can technology better help you be more productive with your business, almost every time it starts with what's arguably the most involved task or activity that's performed in an advisor's business and that's executing meetings. Advisors, if they have hundreds of clients, they realistically have hundreds of meetings every year. And that's the process that they're going through almost on a daily basis. So while there are certainly all kinds of activities that go on in an advisor's business, we chose this particular topic because of the sheer volume and the demand that advisors have for technology and helping them perform this specific activity better. As we're going to see on the next slide, there are some common areas where we commonly see breakdowns occur with regard to how advisors execute on client meetings. So for example, when you think about how they're getting ready for a meeting, a common activity is to go in and review previous meeting notes, look at the client's file, identify certain topics that we want to make sure we address or, or things that we want to make sure that we talk about with the client. On top of that is making sure that there's some personalized uh, experience incorporated into these meetings as well. You know, a meeting with hundreds of clients, you know, all day, every day throughout the course of a year, you want to make sure you don't make them very generic and you're having highly meaningful conversations where you're deepening relationships with your clients. So it could be little things like you might have taken a note in a previous meeting about the client mentioning that they had a, a big vacation plan. So you might want to ask them about their, their plans or maybe there was a life development that was going on, perhaps a retirement or a job change or something like that. So finding those little intimate things to make sure that you can talk about to um, you know, personalize that conversation is another area. Perhaps one of the most involved tasks in executing the client meeting is simply assembling what I like to call the meeting kit, or all of the materials that are being printed off and collated and organized for presentation to the client. Obviously, there are, there's a vast amount of information that can be compiled here, and it's especially important that this information is accurate, well-organized, and easy for the client to read. So a lot of work is involved in, in preparing the meeting kit. During the meeting, effective note-taking is often um, you know, a, a challenge for advisors. Insofar as, you know, I like to call upon a, a statistic that I heard a long time ago in that they say that within 60 minutes of the completion of a meeting, 50% of the information that is shared is forgotten. And then within 24 hours of the completion of that meeting, 90% of the information is forgotten. So how can advisors be more effective at capturing, retaining, and utilizing this information, not only for themselves, but also helping their clients better retain this information, and it's really a, a means to more effectively communicating with clients. And then, of course, there's the one that's you know, kind of flashing in, in red lights here, where the last thing an advisor wants to do is look incompetent by dropping the ball or letting things slip through cracks or having errors when it comes to following through and taking actions that were promised to the client during that meeting. They want to follow through promptly, correctly, and thoroughly. So what we're going to talk about here today is you know, how we can think about 
all these steps that are involved, all of the people, you know, especially if you have a little bit of a larger firm that has multiple staff members, everybody plays a, a different role in executing the client meeting, from the person who schedules the meeting to the person who maybe pulls the reports and, and assembles the, the meeting kit, to the person who's actually leading the discussion with the client. And there could be a, a whole host of additional people involved as well. So there's, that's a lot of balls in the air to juggle. Well, how can we better utilize the technology to execute and manage through all of these different aspects of client meetings? And then lastly, let's not forget, kind of like what I talked about, advisors do not want to drop the ball or look incompetent. That's why extreme accuracy and attention to detail is extremely important when it comes to executing a, a, a really good meeting with the client. So the way we want to think about this, before I hand it off for our demonstration, is to almost lead from a, a crawl before we walk, walk before we run. Most advisors, when we come across them, they do a lot of the basics. Almost automatically, they, they become inherently competent from performing the same activities over and over again, day in, day out, week after week, year after year, whatever it might be, where some things are, are automatic. However, getting to a point of consistency around the processes where you can stay really organized and proactive versus reactive. The, the one thing that, that we really try to work on with advisors, especially if they want to use their technology better, is to not wing it. There should be some sort of pragmatic process involved with how you prepare for, how you conduct, and how you follow up a meeting. And that process incorporates those basics. Like, you know, and, and it's kind of funny, too. We always say every meeting should have an agenda communicated to the client in advance. And every meeting should also have a summary letter communicated to the client within 24 to 48 hours of the completion of that meeting. That's going to help with that retention of information that is so easily forgotten, like I described earlier. But sometimes people, you know, it's surprising how many times we come across advisors and firms that don't do those basic things, like agendas and summary letters. The good news is, most people do that, but how do we make that fit into that overall process of preparing, conducting, and following up meetings? And the definition of that process is, you know, usually best executed in technology when it's first defined clearly and consistently on paper. It's, it's kind of like, you know, um, if you think of a process as the instructions that you're feeding to to your technology. The better you can tell your technology what you want it to do, the better experience you're going to have. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Keith, and, and he's actually going to show you how, what this process looks like and the, you know, what we talked about from crawling to walking and walking to running. People think that you know, when technology is involved, it's actually really complex, but we're here today to tell you that this stuff is actually really easy to do, and Keaton's going to show you that. Keaton? All right. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the webinar. And uh, taking, taking from what, uh, what Brian just mentioned, so what we'll focus on next is looking at, kind of, we, we'll, we'll draw a picture first of, kind of if you have everything set up, how does how does the end goal look? I mean, when and we'll use the same example, but we'll take a look at the profile and let's say we're preparing for uh, all the information. How can uh, a fully executed CRM provide you with all the information that you need to know to be able to be more efficient in in your client meetings? And then sec and then next we'll go under the hood. Because again, it's easy to say having a fully executed CRM systems, but sometimes kind of the, the only way that will work is if it is easy to set up. So we'll go into how you set your processes, 
how do you automate them, and kind of hopefully that will give you an insight into um, Brian's last point, which is it is not that difficult to to use technology for your benefit. So having said that, let me switch screens, and we're in the Navatar system here. So I am an advisor. I have kind of uh, once I log in. I have, uh, I mean, the way I like to manage things is I want to look at you know, what things I need to focus on this month or maybe this week. So on my screen, I see a list of a couple of things that are on my plate. Now, the first one is for a client, Terry, and I need to review Terry's profile. I also see that um, I need to share the meeting agenda with Mike. So Mike is another client of mine. But kind of immediate priority, obviously, is Terry because kind of I have to complete this task by today. So again, this this task came in here through uh, through the automation of the CRM, and, and we'll get into that uh, later on in the demo. But at this point, I am I know this is my task. I need to look at Terry's profile. So on the bottom of my screen I don't have to go anywhere else it has to be in the end the CRM system has to be easy and it needs to provide me with the information I need to see So on the same screen out here I can go and see and look at Terry's profile now as I'm preparing for the meeting one of the critical aspects is to kind of look at my notes and see if there's anything relevant that I need to know about so as I look at this I see well I have some vacation notes I can just click on that and I can see kind of the notes. So I can see that I had a brief conversation with Terry last month. Uh, he did mention during that that he's off the first week of July. He's taking, I guess, a cruise to the Bahamas. So an important aspect that kind of is easily available for me to now know about and that helps me personalize the discussion that I have with Terry. On the same lines, uh, again, a critical aspect is to see you know, what were some of the last face-to-face -face meetings that we've had with Terry and what were some of the notes from there. So I can go in, quickly look at, uh, I see the 2014 annual review meeting. I can look at the notes from that meeting. So all my notes are in here. We kind of covered, discussed a few things about Terry. Uh, at that point, obviously, one of the questions that had come up was kind of with things going on in Europe. So I have, have I have my note here in terms of prepping up in terms of any any major events that are going on that may impact my discussion with Terry. Uh, another thing he mentioned opened a he wanted to open a trust account. So this is something I need to follow up and make sure that we have done. And there was no other kind of significant uh, life event that I need to manage. So I can see the notes from my previous meeting. I know from here some of the things that I may need to focus on for my next review with Terry. Now what also happens is there may be other people. So Terry may have interacted with someone else in my firm. Right? He may have called in, he may have put in a service request. So as I'm looking at some of these notes, I also need to look at things like service requests. So here I can see we have a few different service requests. They've already been closed, the first two, and I can see, kind of, okay, so we had some action items which we've closed from that meeting. Um, he had some issue receiving monthly statements, so that also is closed, but I do see that there is an open service request about opening a Schwab account. And so obviously Terry had called and spoke to someone in my team and I, I don't, while I don't like the fact that it's still open, I do have now the ability to go in and see you know, some of the details behind this and maybe there's there's a reason why it's still open and pending and it may be something that I can be upfront and, and, and talk to Terry about. So when I look at this, I can see uh, he needs to open a Schwab account, but I can also see that, okay, we've actually done all these things. So we've requested the paperwork, we've generated internal paperwork, sent it to um, sent it to me, and I have shared the paperwork already with Terry. I, or in this case, the, the client service person in my team has already shared the paperwork with Terry. 
So we have done all the things that we needed it we needed to do and obviously we're waiting and we can see out here in my to-do list there's a follow-up due next month regarding all the paperwork that we need to get from Terry. So again it's, it's an important thing to note the last thing you want is to be blindsided during a client review meeting with requests that the client has made that are still pending um, and, and it only took 30 seconds for me to figure out everything that was going on and it's much better if I'm in the meeting and I acknowledge that okay beyond the review here are some of the other things that are going on here's the status on that and if I need something for Terry I can then ask for that in that meeting itself. Um, as I'm reviewing the notes I can look at all the other information that I, I feel is, is relevant if there are any documents those are easily accessible to me so I can look at any documents on Terry's profile that I need to access. So I have all this information that I can quickly access and this is kind of just being ready for the meeting right now, right? So I have this information, I've made my notes about some of the things that I want to cover. By this time I've already sent out the agenda so the first few steps are already completed in the system. Now if I feel that I have completed this task, all I have to do now is go and mark this as completed. So I'll just go here, click edit and, and indicate that I have completed this task. And what this does, right, so I have, I've logged my notes, I've indicated in the system that, hey, I've completed this particular task that, were, that I was supposed to do. And the benefit of that, or the benefit of having a fully automated system now is as soon as I mark that this task has been completed, whatever is the next logical task related to a client meeting will automatically now show up. Right? So when I look at the client profile, I will be able to see the next kind of meeting that, um, that I have that I need to do with, with Terry. Right? So, so the benefit there always is that kind of the system is driving the steps whenever I look at a client's profile I will be able to see what the next step is and and that's important from a consistency perspective when you have a lot of your um, when you have a lot of your uh, uh, clients that you're going through uh, or a lot of advisors who are, are looking at okay, I just got a message that they're saying my close screen is frozen let me just let me just make sure you guys can see that. Uh, but while while I fix that, um, so it's kind of the the consistency is important because once you have a lot of advisors, once you have a lot of clients, uh, it's not easy to keep track of some of these things. Right? You will not know uh, what what things you have to uh, you have to focus on. Uh, you may not know what the next step is. So having a system, and I think hopefully the screen is refreshed now, having a system which now tells me, okay, now my next step is next month when, when is the actual meeting that we'll have with Terry. So, so all these things are automated in, in the workflows that you set up. But the key to this, so this was an, 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 a, a view into how Kind of if you have set up your processes, if you have defined them, uh, the system can actually drive your process forward and remind you to do certain things. But the only way that works is if it's easy enough. So in the next thing that I wanted to focus on was to actually show you that it really is a simple process to to set these processes or to automate these processes. So we'll, we'll not create the entire thing, I'll show you a couple of steps to illustrate that it's easy, it's simple, but it's still very flexible because those three things are important whenever you know, you're trying to automate anything. So let's go ahead and let's say I want to create a new, we call these auto plans. Right? 
So let's say I want to create a new, let's, let's say I'm coming up with a new process, right? So I'll create a new annual review process. And for now, I'll just make it inactive. We should, as best practice, we should uh, organize these processes. So it's like a client servicing process that I have. And then I define, right? So what, what do I, who is this applicable to? So this is obviously only for clients. And I want to set it up for anyone with whom we have a review, uh, let's say, later on this year. So we'll go in there, and I'll I'll go ahead and uh, I'll set it up, and say that the next review date should be before the end of this year. And we'll go ahead and save. I'll get a couple of messages to confirm, and I have set up the criteria. Now I can go and define all the steps that we have to perform. And we can be very, very granular in here. I mean, even simple things like Brian was mentioning, within 60 minutes, we have to make sure we enter your notes. You can, you can get down to that level here. So let's define a couple of steps. So I've, I've set up this review. Uh, now what should be the first step in there? Uh, the first step is I should be reaching out to the client and and so let me set up a reminder and we'll we'll create for everyone this is important i don't want any user to go and delete this reminder so i'll set it up that way now who should be performing this so i want to reach out to the client um, let's it should be the responsibility of the financial advisor so i could go in there and i could say well instead of a specific person within my firm it should be the financial advisor, whoever is the advisor of the client. They need to perform this task. And let's start the whole planning thing, let's say, a month before the actual review meeting. So that gives us enough time to execute on things. So the due date, we'll set it up so that it's 30 days before the, act the actual activity. And what I need to do is reach out to set up a meeting. Right. So the first step is I need to reach out to the client and kind of coordinate calendars and set up a meeting. Right. So that's my first step. I'll go ahead and save this. So pretty easy. I just went ahead and, and created the first step in, in this particular plan. Okay. So I can go back and look at the process. And I have one step that I have, I have already indicated in here. Now the second step is essentially once I have set up a date, I need to then set up and sh share an agenda for the meeting. Right? So we need to be proactive. We need to have an agenda that we need to send out set up and send to the client. I want to do that only after I've set up the meeting. So I kind of only have, once I've completed this task, do I want to create the next task? So I can just go here, click next. I want to create a reminder. Now again, depending on the situation of your firm, and that's where the flexibility comes in. So maybe maybe the agenda is someone kind of this specific person who kind of will work with me to create the agenda and send it to the client. And if it's always that same person, I can actually go in and say, Alec is the person who should be sending this agenda. And this should be done, let's say, within a day of when we have set up and completed the previous task, which was to set up the meeting. And so as soon as I have a meeting date confirmed, within one day, I should perform the sec second task, which is to send a meeting agenda. And again, I can go and save that. And this is how I'll build the plan. Right? Uh, if 
it took me about and I was explaining uh, everything as I as I went along with you so it took me about maybe three to four minutes to set this up I had actually timed myself in I'll, I'll go back and say, show you a completed plan and to uh, let's say this annual review meeting plan so we had a much more detailed plan that we have already set up in the system so I'm sharing the meeting agenda then I'm gathering some reports and reviewing the profile having the meeting and here kind of here are kind of some of the things that Brian had mentioned as a critical right I have to make sure I record those meeting notes right so it's, it's easy to say and most people will do that but it's always beneficial if there's a tickler or a reminder that you get to say hey did you record the meeting notes and then create a task for the next meeting share the meeting summary with clients right so you're building consistency but you're also kind of incorporating certain best practices and again it's kind of over time everyone then gets used to doing these things so that kind of was was to cover the second aspect of having an automated CRM and the focus there was that it should be easy to set up and hopefully that comes through uh, those were the two kind of main items that we wanted to cover so let me go back to the slides and um, Alan I think uh, we could pause at this point maybe uh, I see a few questions have come up so uh, let's see if um, there are any questions we can answer or is anything else that um, that we may want to cover okay thanks Keaton before we dive into the questions let me just remind you that Navitar specializes in driving better performance with critically important front-end wealth management workflows like those you've just seen and if you want to see more of these processes or any of the systems that we showed you in detail we're happy to arrange that or maybe you want to talk about a particular issue that you are facing and wonder how Navitar might be able to help we're happy to do that what differentiates Navitar is our wealth management product with the specialized customizable workflows and a team that understands the wealth management business we help you with your data and reports and your workflows we also make sure that your team is successful in using the system and finally it's built on Salesforce the leading cloud CRM platform so let's go to the questions here's the first one and maybe Brian this is directed to you this all looks good but would I need to hire an IT manager in order to effectively roll this out <laughs> that's, a, that's a very common question that comes up a lot and the, the answer is no you don't need to hire an IT manager but a best practice is definitely having somebody in-house on your staff who can perhaps raise their hand and take the lead insofar as becoming as trained as possible on the, the Navitar solution as well as any technology for that matter. It's, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of functionality out there and a, a common issue that comes up is I don't know if I'm using my technology to the fullest ex extent of its capability. But by having somebody in-house who understands your business and is willing and motivated to really understand the technology as well, that's by far the best practice. Because as we just saw through the demonstration here, most of this stuff to set up these, these workflows and manage tasks and, and some of the other key activities, it, we just saw it's not complicated inside of the tool. It's just a matter of knowing where to click and you know what the you know the mindset is around how we're actually setting up the, the activity here's a follow-up question I run a three-person shop isn't all this focus on process overkill or isn't it over engineering <laughs> another good another good question and it actually what, what Keaton uh, just showed towards the end of his demonstration where he showed that full-blown annual review meeting workflow that was built out I believe it was 10 uh, steps well 
again, it, it's pretty common sense to tell people that, okay, you need to update your CRM following a meeting to include your meeting notes. Well, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer, but the best practice is to update that at a certain time. In fact, as soon as possible after the meeting, because the better those notes are, if they're documented into the tool immediately following the meeting, perhaps when you're delegating a follow-up activity to somebody else on your staff, the better information that's in the CRM, the better instructions they're going to have to follow. And remember, the longer you wait after a meeting, that's when information gets forgotten. So in that particular example, it's less about what needs to be done, but more about when it needs to be done. And that's why we, we're strong advocates of having that really proactive, consistent process where certain, you know, you, you don't need to define it to extreme levels of detail, but to keep it at, at a level of every client gets an agenda. After every meeting, we update the CRM right away. And then after every meeting, we send the summary letter. Those are high-level principles but it's still important to be able to execute those in a consistent and timely fashion. Okay, thanks, Brian. Uh, Kate, and this one is probably best aimed at you. Do you help people set up workflows? I don't want to have to build auto plans myself, even though it looks easy. And what about reports? <laughs> uh, yeah, great question. Uh, yes, the, an the answer to that is yes. Uh, we we do help set up all these things, and sometimes kind of it's um, from my experience, it's it's kind of you you obviously need to have something that's easy to set up, but sometimes you just don't have the time, right? And so we we do fully recognize that, and and we we support all our customers in setting up these workflows as well as kind of providing best practices based on our experience. Okay, uh, there's another question here. Um, probably I'll send over to you, Caton. Is this a custom build every time? Is there a consulting cost? Uh, no, there is no consulting cost. It's it's all part of the products and uh, and the platform services that come with the product. Okay, and here's another one. Maybe I missed it, but can I include or integrate my email correspondence? Oh, you absolutely can. It's uh, it's something that all our customers do. We also highly recommend that you uh, bring over email correspondence. It's very easy to do. It's um, we integrate with Outlook or Gmail, so you will be able to bring in any email correspondence very easily into the system. Okay. And here's another one also around auto actions. What about if someone leaves who I've assigned an auto action? Am I then in big trouble? <laughs> uh, no, no, we, it's, it's, a, it's a common occurrence. And uh, it's a scenario that we recognize can happen any time. So there's no impact. Uh, we, actually have, uh, we actually have a utility where when, when any, any person leaves and there's either someone else taking up their role or, or you want to reassign, there's a way for you to just reassign all the all the action items to, to whoever is taking up that role. Okay. All right, I think we've covered all the questions. Once again, Navitar is based in New York and we specialize in driving better performance in your wealth management through specialized workflows. And if you'd like to do a deeper dive into anything that we've talked about today, please let us know. And of course, if you have a particular issue that you're facing, we can talk about that too. I want to thank our panelists today and also give you the number for Navitar, 212-863-9655, extension 7434. I'm Alan Siegert. You can call me directly and we're happy to set up a discussion or a demo or discuss a particular problem that you might have. And I want to thank our panelists, Brian Caustic and Kate and Conker. Thank you all.